Welcome to the High Tunnel Grape Project video series. In this video, Professor Andy Allen will be discussing how to winter prune table grapes. This video was filmed at the Arkansas Fruit Research Station in Clarksville in mid-February. First thing you do when you come to a vine, uh, you quickly examine it uh, for any dead or diseased wood that needs to be removed. Make sure that make sure that you're going to miss that. Look at the structure of the vine. Are there any any changes that need to be made? Uh, for instance, we have a spur here going straight up, and again, I prefer to have my uh, spurs uh, going off to the side or at a downward angle. It makes canopy management easier if you're going to be combing shoots downward. Uh, if you have shoots that go straight up or spurs that go straight up and the shoots come off, they billow out. It makes the canopy thicker and provides shading. Um, so that's one that I would definitely look at removing um, altogether. Uh, you can also uh, look to see again, if there's you need to make any replacements in the woody structures, um, such as uh, if you need to replace a cord on it, etc. See if there are any uh, good candidate shoots to lay down in its place. Uh, if not, then uh, hopefully in the coming season you can find a good candidate coming out of a basal position somewhere near the head of the vine that can be uh, put down, uh, used as a replacement for that. Now again, we're talking about balanced pruning, so the idea here is that uh, we're going to rough prune the vine, take the uh, weight of the prunings, and again, we only utilize one-year-old wood, so if we cut off old spurs, we don't include that two-year-old wood. What balanced pruning does is basically it looks as a partitioning between uh, where the vine put its growth energy between new wood and fruit crop. And that's what we're trying to balance is its ability both to grow wood and produce crop without putting excess stress on the vine. So we'll, we rough prune the vine, gather up the one-year-old wood uh, prunings, one-year-old cane prunings, weigh those out and utilize that form, that weight applied to a formula, which uh, in this case we're we'll using the uh, standard formula, 30 plus 10, uh, to determine how many buds or nodes that we will retain. Again, with the way the formula works is that um, the uh, 30 plus 10, it will retain 30 nodes for the first one pound of prunings and then 10 nodes for every pound after that. And that works out well if uh, you have like a, say, uh, two and a half pounds, then you just use multiply that 10 by the half, which would end up giving you 30 plus 10 plus five uh, or 45 nodes. Uh, now, if I had to make an educated guess on this, I would say looking at the wood, we're probably looking at something in the neighborhood of about two pounds, give or take a quarter of a pound. But now, so the thing we're going to do, the, uh, the principle we want, um, we want to rein the growth back in as close to the cordon as possible. So for instance, uh, on this one, we would cut this back uh, to this lower cane. Let's get rid of that right off the bat so that we constantly uh, keep the growth rain back. Otherwise, uh, you tend to uh, have the growth region creep further and further out, making the canopy wider and harder to sustain. Again, we don't want two-year-old wood in there, so I'll eliminate that right off the bat. Uh, that's dead wood uh, there, so I certainly don't want that. And I'm gonna take a second here just to uh, clean the clusters off of here. Uh, another point to make, bring out, um, and I'll point these things out as I find examples of these things, uh, of special points. So we have a spur, an old spur here, where the dominant growth is all the way out at the end, uh, but weaker growth in the back. If this growth is not strong enough to retain as a spur, but I don't want to put my spur out here. So actually what I'm going to do in this case, I'm going to keep a node and that one looks like it's dead all the way back, so I'll just take it off completely. I'll cut back to a one node on, uh, Lord have mercy, I think that one's dead too, yep. Well, I don't have a whole lot of choice then. Um, well, that one's got some life in it, I'll keep him. Um, I'm gonna cut this one a little bit shorter though. I wanna try, uh, hopefully we'll, we can force a shoot back here along the base, and if one comes out this summer, then next winter uh, we can 
if we get a good shoot grow off of there we can bring it back and that's another thing now when you're pruning you're not just pruning for this year you're looking for if you, especially on older vines you're looking for potential changes you can make next year which might mean that um, you want to you do want to maintain the fruiting capacity of the vine but at the same time if you're starting to get old spurs or um, losing spur positions you want to be able to incur, you know want to try and encourage shoot growth out that can be utilized as replacements so let's see well there's a rule that we uh, utilize um, it's it's a basically uh, a thumb rule that we can utilize which is you lay your thumb at the base of the cane if the bud does not um, if the node does not appear above your thumb then you don't count it for instance Here's a bud right at the very base of there. It's too close, it doesn't show up. So I started with the first node that was obviously had a good internode development underneath. So I consider that my node one position. We're dead back to this point. You can see the color change. This still has a bit of a uh, nice reddish brown on it, but here we are getting into a little bit more of a grayish brown, and you can see that kind of dark ring here that delineates the two. We're dead back to that point. So I'm going to cut back into, and we, we're dead further back than that. Yeah, we're alive at that point, so that shoot is actually dying. And what's probably happened here is we had a heavy canopy, so these, uh, this shoot and probably a lot of them probably developed under heavy shade which leads to poor maturity and ripening of the wood and makes them more prone to winter injury and I'm going to I'm not sure if that one's alive or not yeah okay good I'm going to keep up that as a one node renewal spur and if we get a nice shoot off of this uh, spur here then next year we'll cut that off back to that point rain that growth back down. Again, same thing here. I'm going to cut that off. Ideally, you want pencil size or slightly better. I, I use my pinky as a convenient ruler. Really, realistically, uh, that size or slightly below there is, is optimum. As it starts getting bigger than that, you start to lose fruitfulness. Um, I'm just going to leave that as a, as a two butter. Two node cut. Uh, let's see. Ideally, when we're pruning, uh, we're also concerned about uh, keeping a canopy, uh, an, an individual vine's canopy within its allotted space, which is uh, generally half the halfway point between the two. So this one is actually coming over into that vine's area. So if, if we prune this vine, we would actually cut it back to you know, one of these nodes and keep you that. You can cut that off now if you want. All right, goodbye, Amanda. I'm going to cut it back to this point, put it over here, out of our way. Another thing to do when you're pruning is um, if you utilize plastic ties, twist ties, or ag lock like this, um, or if I, even if you just use uh, uh, sisal twine or other uh, cotton uh, string, anything like that, check your ties. Make sure that, um, that they're not too tight around the cordon so that they cause it to girdle uh, when the growth begins. Now, let's see if I can get this up here. Not exactly ideal, but uh, I'm going to put this up here rather loosely. And let's see. Halfway point's about here, so I'm going to two, three, and four. I'm going to cut that one back to a four node as a spur there. So I'll uh, cut that off and I've laid that down to extend the cord on out. Uh, one, two, three, four on that one. And one thing that uh, concerns me, this wood is a little on the thick side for, uh, but um, I'm going to keep it here uh, for now. Just because we have so little wood on here and we, we need we need to try and maintain some level of cropping. Um, now, a thing to point out, we have a lot of blank wood here. We've lost some spur positions uh, on this that need to be replaced. I've tried to keep as many live uh, canes here as possible, but um, what we'll, what we'll 
do um, this summer when uh, growth begins. Uh, we'll try to identify potential replacement shoots uh, back closer towards the head area of the vine that can be laid down in place of this cane. Uh, either that or hopefully uh, we can stimulate some latent buds to push out that we can re utilize to reestablish uh, spur positions along the vine. All right, so we've rough pruned the vine and the next step is to weigh the wood. Now we're utilizing a scientific scale here. And I'll set that on there. And wind's a little interfering, but somewhere in the neighborhood about 2.8 pounds. So a little heavier than I originally anticipated, but I cut off more wood than I kind of anticipated as well. Um, now you don't have to have a scientific scale to do that. Uh, both commercially or for the homeowner if you're interested in doing balanced pruning. Uh, you can utilize uh, a simple fish scale will be uh, sufficient. It only needs to be uh, as accurate as a quarter pound. So I mean we're doing like you know, hundreds of a pound here or uh, hundreds of a kilogram depending on the measurement. A uh, quarter of a pound is all that is the most accuracy that you need because again in most formulas again the second number is a 10 or, or something in, uh, very close to that, which means that you're going to multiply every pound after the first pound by that second number. So uh, quarter pound accuracy is all you need because quarter of ten is going to be like two and a half, so you'd say three buds. Uh, any, you don't have to get down. You don't have to be so accurate that you get down to the one bud level. So at two point, um, well, the wind keeps. I'm, I'm going to stick with about 2.8 pounds, and we're utilizing a 30 plus 10. So the first pound is 30, uh, second pound is 10, that makes 40, and then about 0.8 times uh, 10 is 8, so 38 nodes, so 38, 38 buds. And, what we, and again, what we're talking about here are what we call the count nodes, these buds that we retain along this one-year-old wood. The number of fruit, uh, the number of nodes that will produce fruit bearing shoots. Because again, what we're trying to do is balance the fruit production capacity of the vine with the uh, shoot growth so that we get a balance of uh, leaf area and uh, fruit production without, so that we don't put excess stress on the vine. So now the next thing is to count the nodes with that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38. Wow, am I good? <laughs> so we predicted a need for about 38 buds, and uh, just by properly rough pruning, we've gotten it to the point where we have 38 buds. Now, and that is just what you call dang lucky. I'm sure I'm not that accurate, my guess. But um, some things to point out. Now, the other thing that we're doing besides getting the fruiting potential and the growth potential in balance with one another through this. Uh, the other um, use of pruning is to structure the canopy. What we want is to have the buds more or less evenly spread out along the cordon uh, so that they're not, we don't get into areas of uh, many shoots crowding into a small space. Now we're limited on the ability to do that because we don't have uh, we've lost a lot of fruiting positions over here. Hopefully we can regenerate some of those. But we do have some clustering going on here. I'm not real happy with that. I'm gonna, it's going to cost us a bug. I'm going to take this old spur off the bottom and get rid of a shoot from uh, a fruiting shoot from this position. Um, and ideally, I'd like to take this spur out as well, although I'm going to, uh, I'm going to be hesitant. Actually, I think what I'll do is just cut that back uh, to a single one. See if we can. We also need to rein this spur back in, so I'm going to be very severe on here and see if we can't push a latent bud or a basal bud to push out back along the spur somewhere so that next year we can cut back to that position and again rein the growth in. See, we, we need to do the same thing here and here uh, and here as well. We need to push. Uh, buds out closer to the cordon so that we can keep that zone of origination uh, much more compact around the cordon, keep that canopy from getting out of bounds. So, uh, 
that's about as as good as we can go on this one without uh, getting extremely severe.